start real quick. Rise 2, devlog number 8. Uh, so, the thing about Rise 2's first public build is even though I finished stage 2, I'm delaying the public build until I finish the game. Essentially indefinitely, because I have no idea when I'll finish the game. The, date, the goal right now is February. Uh, but I don't know how true that will be. Knights' deadline was, like, I think, August, and I never finished it. Rise's deadline was October of the year I was working on it, and I finished it two months early. So, don't, like, think about that too much. It could be off by a lot. But I'm not doing that because the interaction I got from Rise at its most was when the first public build released, and second, when the game itself released. With Knights, it was when that first public build released. So, I'm going to wait until that very first public build is, is the whole game's finished before releasing that very first public build. Calling it a public build at that point is kind of wrong, because it'll be the complete game. So, I'm waiting to finish the game before uploading it. Now, getting into the devlog itself, I'm going to pick Welmer here first. We now have a map screen. Down, right, here's the lighthouse. There's the lighthouse's description. Ha ha ha, reference to takeover, the cancelled game. Ha ha ha, very funny. Then we go into the Bleak Woods, there's its description, yep. Now the Usurper King is a completely new character, and totally not just foreshadowing, foreshadowing a character who's been in several games at this point. If you look right there at the base of the lighthouse though, there's Regulus using his uh, Knight Sprite that never got used. I didn't feel like redrawing him completely when I was going to shrink the thing down to a much smaller resolution to fit there anyway. You wouldn't be able to tell if this was the Knights version or the Rise 1 version, so I just used the better looking one. Now up here we have Stage 3. I've not complete. I've not drawn it on the map yet or anything like that, but if we go in, I've finished all of the bosses so far for Stage 3. The stage when the game's complete will have 6 bosses, right now it has 4. Now when I go in, you'll figure out why that is, and that's because 3 of those 4 are uh, mirrored versions of the core playables. So every playable will have a evil doppelganger that they'll fight in the stage. Welmer's was pretty obvious. Welmer's a mini overbearer, so it made sense for his evil double to be a mini underbearer. That one was pretty obvious. And it's the only one of those that I went with the obvious one. With Woofius, there's several obvious options. I could have went with Barkley because that was a Woofius reskin in M1. And Woofius was originally going to be Saberwolf skin, so I could have went with Saberwolf for Woofius as well. But I didn't do that, because that would have made sense. Monty had a few options, but I didn't go with any of them. Now we'll go with Monty's to show his off. Monty's is the Gruntus Prince Python. The Python thing being, you know, Monty Python, that's the joke. Uh, I did not come up with that. Patch did, so credit Patch. I guess. Uh, now, obviously his design is from the Gruntus Lords from Knights. I'm pretty sure I showed off the Gruntus King. I don't think I've shown off the Gruntus Queen on this channel, but this guy is essentially a color mishmash of the two. On the left side of the mask is multi-eyes like the Gruntus King. On the right side is one angry eye like the Gruntus Queen. And the wings come from the Gruntus King. So that's where this guy's design comes from. He's a hodgepodge of the two. Because that makes sense. Anyway, if we wait for his uh, a hack swing, you can see it's a scepter, not an axe, because you know royalty. That's the joke. And Gruntuses, like normal Gruntuses, aren't in this game as of now, but they're based off of moles. So it makes sense for them to be in the cave stage, which is what stage 3 is. So I might put them there. I might add Gruntuses. We'll see. Probably not, but we'll see. Now, Woofius is easily my favorite. Uh, didn't go with Barkley or Saberwolf, like I said. Instead, we have the demonic rat Yig with a bone spear. Now, Yig's uh, walking animation is different. So is Grovel, which is the evil version of Welmer. Grovel's walking and idle animations are different. With Yig, it's just his walk animation. His idle animation is the same, other than using different parts. Now, they don't have the exact same health as their normal counterparts, but their health is comparable. So, Woofius is, uh, so Yig has the least, while Python has the most. Just like Monty has the most, and Woofius has the least of the playables. Uh, their speed is also similar to that. They don't move as fast as the playables, but the fastest one is Yig, and the slowest one is Python. 
Now, we'll move on to the boss of this stage, uh, where I took that evil counterpart thing for the that I did with the mini-boss, and I applied it to a boss from Rise. The boss I applied it to was Lithidus. So we have the de a deserter from the Knights of the Molten, which is the group Lithidus was a part of before he did the whole... whatever his Rise backstory was. You know, the murder cannibalism stuff. I'll, even before the Blackmore stuff it mentioned in that. But yeah, this is, an this is another former member of the Knights of the Molten. He only actually shares one move with Lithidus. The rest of his moveset's completely new. But going off of the evil doppelganger thing, again, all of these are supposed to be completely new characters. They're not supposed to be shadow versions or dark versions or whatever. They're completely new characters that just look similar. Nemesis isn't supposed to be an evil version of Lithidus. No, no, no. Uh, if I did that, I would have, you know, not given him a shield because that was stupid. The shield thing comes from Nemesis' original sketch, because Nemesis' first sketch ever actually predates Lithidus' first sketch. Uh, the ch the shield thing, when he like does the basic, I'll show it in a second, you see how it has that cross pattern on the front of it? That used to be the center of his chest on that original sketch. And if you look, he has that big thing torn out of his armor in the center where the skeleton pops out of. The idea with that is that he is that, that used to be the center of his armor, and that that got torn off at some point. Now, Nemesis here actually has quite a diverse moveset. It might not seem like it at first, but he has five moves, which is the same number as Lithidus. Now, he has that move where, he, where the skeleton comes out and summons a big fire pillar. He has this move where, the, where he uh, sticks out his mane and attacks you with it, and it shoots fire. <clears throat> and then he has the shield bash thingy. And the last move is this charge thing that happens if you get too far away. Now, it doesn't seem like a uh, particularly large moveset. Also, the stomp. The stomp is the only move he shares with Lithidus. That's the only one. Now, it might not seem like he has a diverse moveset when you guys are fighting him, and that's primarily because three of those five moves are all proximity-based. The main, the basic shield thing, and the stomp, uh, are all based off of how close you are, how close you are to him, just diff just slightly differing levels. The stomp and the shield thing are actually the same levels. It just depends on how close you are to him for how long. And the charge attack is completely dependent on you being really, really far away from him, which won't happen that often. Really, the only move that that will happen very frequently is the main because it has the furthest reach. Uh, and therefore, you need to be the first, you don't have to be the closest to him for it to happen. You can be a decent distance away and he'll still do it. And the pillar attack, which happens completely randomly. Now, Nemesis obviously isn't based off of a playable character in this game, because Lithidus isn't in this game at all. And even if he was, his moveset would be completely different than Nemesis's other than the Stomp. The Stomp, I decided to keep the same as if they were part of the same group, they probably would have had similar training, and therefore. That was the only move Lithidus had that wasn't dependent on his halberd. So giving that to him, uh, giving the only move that he wouldn't that he would be able to do without having a halberd to him, made sense. Nemesis's weapon was supposed to be a sword, but then I thought ripping the shield thing, uh, the crest thing out of his chest and using that as a weapon was kind of hilarious. So I went that route and had the fire skeleton thing because I think that's hilarious as well. Uh, went, decided to get weird with this boss and the bosses of this stage. Because this game is less odd than Rise 1, so I just decided to go crazy with it for this stage. Yeah, haven't even done the enemies for this stage yet. Uh, probably should. Probably should do the normal enemies. That's probably what I'm going to do right after I finish this devlog, which is now.